Welcome to Husky Hockey Insider Podcast. I'm Mick Hatton from the Rink Live, and I'm very happy to be joined by St. Cloud State Men's Associate Head Coach, Dave Shyak. Dave, how are you doing today? Doing real good there, Mick. Uh, obviously, the weather's been getting colder, but a nice uh, sunshiny day here today, so happy to see that. And uh, we're finished practice, as you all well know. We practice in the mornings and uh, getting ready for the big game tomorrow. Yeah, fun. Hey, fun to see this. Uh, I, I realize, uh, you know, you'd rather kind of see a team like this maybe later on in the season or whatever, but, uh, you know, for fans or whatever, here's a, here's a fun weekend. Uh, Minnesota State Mankato, ranked number two. You guys currently sit in at number eight. Uh, I would imagine, uh, you know, when, for particularly for the guys who have, have been around or whatever, this is a, a series that they've, they've got to be looking forward to uh, just because of how many great games these te- two teams have played against each other, huh? Yeah, we, we actually don't mind playing these games early in the season. Uh, it kind of gives you a barometer where you're at as a team. Uh, the rankings, I think you can throw out the window. Uh, I know they mean a lot to the media and some other people, but and I think any coach will tell you it's, it's about getting better every day, trust the process, play your best hockey at the end of the year. But when you play these big games early, uh, it really tests you individually, tests you as a team. And uh, I think we put our work in to prepare our guys, know what's coming ahead. Our older guys are going to have to lead the way and it should set up for, for a great matchup. They're, they're, they're saying the same thing. I think they've got a long, you got a young guys inserted in the lineup as well as us. Uh, they're going through some ups and downs. I'm sure Hasty will tell you the same thing. Uh, obviously homecoming. Uh, we played in their barn last year, two great games and we're expecting no different this year. Yeah. You, you know, uh, when, when you look back to the last week and I know you guys have watched some video of, of them playing last weekend, but uh, it, it was an eye opener to me. Uh, you, you know, I, not that Mankato won at home, uh, but that, that first game on, on Friday, you just don't see teams uh, beating UMT six to nothing very often. Uh, th- th- that uh, told me that, uh, that they're starting to get on the right track a little bit, huh? Yeah. And you know what? Duluth is the same. I think they got 14 new faces, Mick. So a lot can happen early with fresh faces. You're still getting your structure in place. A lot of teaching going on and it can be quite overwhelming for a lot of these uh, new faces and, 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 and freshmen, including transfers. It's a different environment, different coaches, but um, obviously Sandy's a, a great coach as well as hasty and it was a much tighter game the next game, obviously the two of one. So anything can happen early. And, and, you know, it's about preparation, getting the reps in practice and preparing the best of your ability. But I think at times early in the year, you're going to see some jitters from the young guys. Yeah. Uh, you know, a, a lot of, a lot of guys uh, obviously kind of moved on from last season, some cute players for them, Julian Napravnik, uh, Nathan Smith, uh, Dryden McKay, uh, obviously were, were huge parts of the, their, uh, their team, but boy, you look at it and there's still Cade Borchert, <laughs> Ryan Sandlin, uh, you know, Brendan F- furry i mean uh jake livingstone i mean there's still uh, a lot of really good players on this team isn't there yeah and i still think they got great depth uh, you, you're missing the morton kid who's probably yeah. he's really taking a step he's leading them in scoring i, I think if you had talked to them their their greatest strength right now is uh, their defenseman they're kind of holding the fort uh obviously a, a different different team in net with mckay playing all those games for years but uh the young kids playing well playing well for them uh, but it starts with the deep moving pucks for them and defending hard. And then their four depth really good. Uh, like I said, Morton's really stepped up. Borshat's always been good. Uh, Sandy's boy's been really good. And Fury, their captain, is their motor, uh, along with some other guys that are filtered in there. But their depth is good. And it doesn't change how they play. They play hard. They play fast. They play heavy. They make it real difficult to create uh, offense uh, because they have the puck so much. Uh, and obviously, we're not going to change how we play. We play tightly contested games. We actually play very similar to them. Uh, so we're going to have two similar teams go at it with young face, uh, young faces in the lineup. Uh, but it doesn't really change a whole lot of the structure and how we play. Yeah. Uh, from, from a defensive standpoint, you know, again, this is not a team that you guys don't know. Uh, you know, what are key things when you're, when you're playing against them, uh, you know, from a defensive standpoint, Dave? Uh, well, you really got to te- protect the net front. Uh, obviously, we can't give them any clean looks at net. They do create a lot of havoc because they are heavy. Uh, they throw a lot of pucks out at net. They wrap, they stuff. 
So we got to make sure we take care of plays along the wall, kill plays so they don't have extended time in the ozone, uh, which they thrive off. Their whole game plan is built on their forechecking ability, a lot of pressure, collecting pucks, ozone time, forcing you to defend and possibly draw some penalties. And so, you know, our plan is obviously we want to spend less time in our zone, get pucks out cleanly and have more juice uh, going up the ice and putting pressure at their net. Yeah. Uh, you know, if I told you, you know, before the season started, Hey, you guys, uh, through four games, we've only given up three goals. I, I think you would have taken that Dave, huh? <laughs> yeah. You know what? Like I said, it's, uh, we, we put some emphasis early on the year. I'm sure you talked to Lars about it. We want to be a well-conditioned team, play fast, have good execution, but do really well on special teams. So, so far and goal tending. And those three, you know, power play, penalty kill, and goaltending has helped us through those four games for sure. Because we did show some warts in our game. Uh, we'd still like to create a little bit more grade A opportunities and have uh, the puck a little bit more in the, in the ozone. We certainly address that this week. But uh, you're going to have some ups and downs. And guys are filling out new roles a little bit. Uh, some guys are getting more minutes than they were last year. So that takes a little bit of time to go through that growing process. But uh, as you mentioned, we'll certainly take it. Uh, uh, by winning hockey games. Yeah, I think you learn a little bit faster mm -hmm. uh, when you're in a winning environment, but there are some mistakes being made in our jobs as coaches. It's okay to make mistakes and uh, build practice plans around the areas that we need to get better at. Yeah. Uh, you work so closely with the defenseman. I thought we'd kind of talk about each of the, the those guys and maybe you can tell us a little bit about now that you've had, a you know, whatever it's been a couple months now to, to, to work with these guys, you've, you've gotten to know them a little bit better. So I thought I'd, we, we kind of go through the, the lineup. Uh, you know, uh, Dylan Anhorn has come in as, as a transfer from, from union. And I know you guys were excited when, when you got him, but uh, I, I don't know, is it fair to say he's even been maybe even a little bit better than you guys ex expected him to be? No, for sure. So far he has, I mean, we're only four games in, so it's a smaller sample. We'll extend that a little bit, but he, he certainly uh, exceeded our expectations. He's got a little bit more, I think, personally, just by watching video from last year till now, he's got more deception to his game offensively than I originally thought. Uh, he can both transport a puck. He's not just a puck mover and a power play guy. He can carry the play. Uh, he's real good on retrievals. And he's starting to play heavier defending-wise. And he's a, he's a strong 200-foot player for us that plays in all situations. I think when we talked a little bit, Mick, he was uh, kind of like a Seamus Donahue. Yeah. Uh, and I, I think, you know, for small sample wise, again, there's a little bit more deception to his game offensively that we're seeing right now. Hopefully he can continue to do that. And he's a student of the game. He wants to get better at every aspect of the game. And uh, he's been, he's been a great, great addition. He's great in the locker room and he loves uh, most important. He loves being a Husky. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm been impressed, I guess, with the fact that, you know, through the transfer portal, I mean, you guys have really kind of gone out there and, and found guys to fit specific needs. And not only that, but guys who have been kind of leaders on, on their teams, you know, who have been looking for, obviously, a, a, a different location or whatever, but but uh, he was a guy that uh, I know was going to be a captain at Union and stuff, and and uh, it sure sounds like he's he's been a terrific fit, though. Yeah, on the ice and off the ice, like you said, in the locker room, he's great. Off the ice, he's a lead. He does everything the right way, and uh, you could tell he's uh, he's got a professional approach. Uh, he's a man. He's twenty. You know, he's twenty three years old. I think he turns twenty four in January. He's got expectations for himself. Uh, he knows where he wants to go, uh, but he also, uh, right now, obviously, currently wants to help us win a championship. And so he's doing things the right way. And again, um, you know, guys, it, it, it takes some time when you transfer in. You don't know how quickly they're going to make the transition. But obviously, he's made it uh, quite smoothly and he's real happy to be here. Yeah. I, I, one of the things that's impressed me is just his poise out there. I mean, it, he does not seem to get rattled very easily. No, his puck poise and patient with the puck, I, I think, are one of his greatest stains. He's not just a first pass guy. Uh, he could see the second or third option, but he also he's learning to beat people with his feet. Uh, meaning for checking pressure and carrying the play up by his head north. 
Yeah. Uh, you know, Jack Bjart obviously is, uh, you know, someone, you know, everybody in the state, I guess, is aware of and, and everything else. So, I mean, there's there's always a lot of eyes on, on him. But, uh, you know, have you seen him kind of start to take, you know, some some big steps forward, I guess, this fall here in the early going? Yep. What, what sticks out most, everybody, uh, it was interesting early in the year there, Mick, because he'd already been at a camp uh, for a month when he was with the World Junior Team. So he had to go to camp two when he got back to us and he was already in camp shape. So I think he was eager to get the season going. Uh, but again, what sticks out most, he's a great puck mover. He really snaps the puck. He sees plays up the ice. Uh, he's a fun player to watch. Obviously a great, great young man. Um, and he's, you know what, he's in, he's in, he's in better shape this year. Uh, he's took it upon himself to get better in the areas that we addressed, you know, specifically defending wise. And he's doing a much better job of that. His rush reads are good. His ability to close in the D zone and his net front and board battles are getting better. And he's constantly, again, another one of those young kids that constantly wants to get better. And he's certainly trending in the right, right directions in the, those areas that we just mentioned there. Uh, but again, when he sticks out, he, he, he's a great puck mover. He can distribute it on the power play. He's got a better shot than people think. We just got to utilize that a little bit more specific on the power play that that takes time but he's he's done a lot for us means a lot for us and he's certainly grown on uh, on both sides of the puck i you know i, I i've heard uh, obviously I mean i hear from fans all the time and, and, and at different points you know last season you know some people whatever you know he, he would have maybe a mediocre game or something like that and people would be like well i don't see this or i don't see that and i'm like Okay, but you, what you have to understand is one, <laughs> he was right up, basically right out of high school coming in to, to play college hockey, which is an extremely difficult thing to do. And, and you know, the, the other thing about him is, is there's, a, there's an awful lot of subtlety to his game that, you know, you really have to, to me, you have to kind of understand the game to kind of see, to really understand, to really take in like all of what he kind of brings to a team. I mean, there's, there's a lot of little things I think that add up to why he's a good player. I don't know if you agree with that or not, Dave. Yeah, no, he's uh, in, you know, one thing you forgot to mention again, he, he's only, he was only 18 years old last year, 18 yeah. in, in a men's league and it's not high school hockey. And I know he played uh, probably 20 games with Fargo force, but even in saying that, it's it's a big transition and then you know he made the world junior team as a puck mover and power play type guy um but it's about learning to defend against men and defend speed so there's going to be some ups and downs and you know when he got back from world juniors early in the year like you said he, he could have been the best defenseman on the ice the next game he was average i think you see that with every young player coming to our league because every series is a little bit different and as long as you're taking baby steps forward you might take a step back as long as you continue to move north in your path of development that's a positive thing and, and pretty certainly has done that um you know you got the you got the pressure of being a draft pick you got the pressure of being on the world junior team but he's real level level headed real level headed and his game is transcending and he's getting better uh, again at those areas that we talked about and hopefully he smooths out those ups and downs he went through last year so far he certainly has been um so he's he's been real real solid for us real solid yeah uh Spencer Meyer obviously the the, the captain of this team uh you know coming back uh, again to be a captain for for the third season uh he's one of those guys that uh you know yeah you, you, we can look at he's on the power play and he he you know, you can look at some numbers with him, but I, I think there's an awful lot more to, that he brings to you guys. I mean, he, just talk about him, I guess, in the locker room and what he kind of means to this team. Well, a special leader. It's hard to find good leaders these days that lead in every aspect uh, that you want as a coach. You, you could certainly lead on the ice. You can certainly lead in the locker room, but it's off the ice as well. Uh, I mean, he's, he's Sartell's local hero. He, he, the other night, he's out talking at a leadership group um, with the high school there. So he's very active in the community, which is, is important for obviously our university and our program. Uh, again, another guy that does his approach is very, very professional, how he eats, how he sleeps, his work habits. If he has to do rehab because he had some injuries earlier, he does everything the right way. And, uh, you know, when guys are looking for answers, these young guys, when they're ups and downs, the first guy they go to is spinning. Uh, he, he's been through them and he, he addresses it in the right way to say, Hey, it's okay 
to make mistakes. It's okay. You're going to go through some ebbs and flows. And uh, especially Spinney's just one of those special leaders that, you know, can lead on the ice, can lead in the locker room and off the ice. And he's brought a lot into that group. And certainly guys look up to him and we look up to him too. Yeah. Uh, Brendan Bushy, another uh, fifth year guy for, for you guys who decided to come back uh, this season. Uh, again, he, he just seems like such a steadying influence when, he, when he's out there for you guys, huh? Yeah, that's a good, good way to put it. I, we, he's, he stabilizes. He can stabilize shifts and uh, he's a minute muncher that way. Um, you know, obviously he's, he's a defender first. He's a PKer. He's a first pass guy. He understands that that's his identity and it's a matter of doing that consistently. And, and, and Bushman has certainly done that. Um, you know, he, he loves being a Husky. He came back for a fifth year, obviously to try to get us to the, help us get us win a championship and get us to the title game again. Obviously that's our goal. Um, and he certainly got better in being consistent and to have a guy like that, that can stabilize the back end. I think every coach would love to have that. And um, we're happy to have him back. Yeah, and anytime you you can stick a guy in the lineup that's played whatever 135, 140 college games, uh, I, I think you take that, right? That's a lot of experience for sure. And, yeah. and you need that. You need that reliability for sure. Yeah, you know, a guy that uh, has has stepped into a bigger role for you guys here in the early going, and some of it, you know, it has been obviously with with Josh Licky kind of being out, uh, you know, with, with his injury or whatever, but. But Brady Zemer has really kind of stepped up, and uh, I don't know. I mean, I've, I've been impressed uh, with him in the early going. I think he brings kind of a different element uh, to, to this team. Uh, w- when you look at Brady, I guess what stands out for you? Well, he's hard to play against. He's yeah. uh, he's 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 a, he's, a, he's a little warrior. Uh, you love to have that. He understands his identity. Um, again, he's he's certainly got some minutes this year. It was tough. And you know this, we had we had real good depth last year, like we do this year, and it, it's tough to make lineups. And uh, probably, you know, on any given night or on any given team, he, he would be playing as a regular. And last year, he didn't complain. He worked hard on the areas that we talked about. Uh, his identity, again, is a, is a puck mover. Uh, he's got to be good at reading the rush, shutting plays down, a penalty killer. And if he can do that consistently, which we've shown, and give us that physical presence, because he can knock guys around a little bit. They take him for granted. He's only five men, five, nine buck 75, but he puts people on their butts and uh, it energizes the bench and guys can play a little bit bigger. So he loves to play that way. He's been, he's been great so far. Uh, he's still getting better and more consistent. It's a bit, it's all about consistency game in game out and his practice habits have been getting better uh, from a year ago. He certainly, understands that and we give him all the credit in the world he worked his tail off this summer got strong got stronger got faster got quicker worked on his agility uh his practice habits certainly got better this year and this so far obviously he's played every single game and played uh real effectively uh, boy if, if i'm an opposing player and i i get a cheap shot in on one of your guys uh he's the last number i want to see out there because he's he's gonna defend teammates i mean yeah. and, and and that's i know that's a huge thing like in, in the locker room for you know a guy who's gonna stand up for you like like brady does he'll stand up for you guys know that he, he embraces moments like that sometimes you got to tame him down so he doesn't take <laughs> stupid penalties. Yeah. Uh, he'll block shots. Obviously, he loves blocking shots. He'll do what it takes to win hockey games. And you need warriors like that on your hockey team, obviously. Yeah. Uh, and, and another guy that's that's making the, I know it kind of made it tougher for you guys to make out a lineup over the weekend was Cooper Wiley because he just seemed to step into that, that role over the weekend. And uh, I thought he got better as the weekend went on. Uh, you just describe, I guess, what Cooper's kind of brought to the team here. Yeah, real good skating ability. And uh, I think he's one of our best conditioned guys. Obviously, a thicker body that can move on the ice, good stick skill. Um, again, we had mentioned before, you're going to see some ups and downs with the younger guy. But Saturday night, again, I told him after Saturday, I thought that was his best game by far. He just, uh, he didn't show any jitters. He played instinctively. He played freely. Uh, his reads were, were fairly good for, for, for that night. His puck touches were good. So he was, 
he was performing really well. Uh, now, in saying that, we need consistency from him uh, in, in, in terms of battling uh, and competing defensively along the walls in front of the net. Um, but his strengths are in his identities, his skating ability, ability to move the puck and be physical. Yeah. Uh, Andre Trayball, uh, you know, I, I think is a guy that maybe kind of goes under some people's radar, but uh, I, I, I just think in the last two seasons, uh, he's really kind of come a long ways. Uh, when, when you look at Andre, I guess what stands out for you? He, well, first, he's gotten better and better every year. And a lot of it was strength base. He put time in in the summer to get stronger with his lower body. And it's made a difference in terms of how he defends, but he's a great puck mover. He's one of our best guy, best defensemen in joining the attack, creating offense off the attack. He's really good at jumping to holes and making the next play. Really good on the offensive blue line, making good plays there. Um, and he's defending harder. He's getting better at his net front battles, be getting better uh, on his board play. He uses his reach. He disrupts plays. So every year you've seen him get better. Now we're at a point where Andre, you're, you're, you're four years in, be consistent in what you do, and you can be a highly effective player. And so far, he's done that. Yeah. I, and I know uh, a, a guy that you guys uh, wanted to get in over the weekend, and, and it sounded like there was, there was a little bit of arguing as to how, how to get guys in the lineup over the weekend, and you guys end up going with the same lineup both nights. But but Mason Reiners, I know, is, is a guy that you think you guys are, are high on and think uh, he's got a good future ahead of him here. Yeah, no, he's, he's, he's actually been a pleasant surprise. The first couple of weeks, just like the other freshmen, there were some jitters, they're overwhelmed, the speed, the strength, uh, the pass execution, everything. Uh, a lot goes through these young kids' heads. But after, about, I think it was the third or fourth week, Mark, geez, he was making smart puck decisions. He was defending well. Structurally, he knows how to play the position. Um, he's a bigger body than people think, 6'1", 6 6'2", 6 200-pounder. And he was real good in the game that he played. And when you don't notice a guy making mistakes as a defenseman, that's a good thing. Um, he did everything we asked. He moved pucks. He defended. He kept his game simple. And you like guys that could chew up good minutes like that. And, uh, and Mace certainly did that. So there's another guy that could certainly play and be a regular in the lineup. But, uh, again, he's done a nice job. And uh, we'll get him in again at some point. Yeah. Uh, you, you work a, a lot uh, with the penalty kill, the penalty kill off to a, a, a very good start. Uh, what, what have been some key things there? Uh, you've, you've obviously had to put in some new faces from, from compared to last season uh, with the penalty kill. Uh, but just talk a little bit about uh, what's been going uh, well so far, I guess, in, in that area. Uh, well, it's always a work in progress. I, we, myself and, uh, and RJ work on the penalty kill and I was, we, there was a lot going on early, a lot of new faces, and it was uh, up and down in practices. Mm -hmm. But the guys, I give them full credit. They responded to uh, what we wanted to try to accomplish. Obviously, you want to take away high percentage plays, but ideally, you don't want to give them time in zone. And uh, our guys have been doing a good job winning faceoffs, up ice pressure, denying clean entries, and pressuring on trigger points. And that, that's the name of the game. And our guys have been doing a good job, but uh, as any coach will tell you, your, your, your best penalty killer is the goaltending, and mm -hmm. the goaltending has been doing a good job. When we do have breakdowns, they're they're making the saves they need to make, and if they need to make one or two more on high percentage shots, they're doing that. So a credit to Jax and Dom and Net right now, and then our, our guys are doing some good things as well. Yeah, uh, and Gr Grant Deshaun uh, picked up his first college goal shorthanded uh, on a nice play that, that he made there. I know that uh, that, that sounds like that's a, that's a role that he's going to see some more time uh, on the penalty kill for you guys. Huh? Yeah. He's got a good stick, good brain, high energy guy, um, a high motor. You need guys like that in the PK. They got to have a brain, good stick and a motor. And he, 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 he really embraces that role. And it was, it was nice to be rewarded for guys like that. He'll block a shot. He'll go down. He'll pressure up ice. He knows where sticks should be in zone. And for him to be rewarded uh, without vice pressure by uh, Crookshank there and feed him in front, uh, it was nice to see him start his first college career uh, or get his first college career goal on a, on a shorthanded attempt, and he was able to finish it. But he's uh, he's going to get a lot of minutes penalty killing for us, obviously this year and future years. Yeah, and uh, you know, and Grant Crookshank, uh, I don't know if. Uh, he... <laughs> 
I, I know you guys were excited when when you got him, uh, but th there's a guy that's playing on the power play, penalty kill. I mean, you guys are playing him a, a ton of minutes. Uh, what's Grant kind of brought to this team? Well, he's he's becoming more well rounded. Um, obviously, you know he he wanted to make a move, fresh start to just uh, get into a different role, and uh, obviously Lars talked to him and. Uh, we thought we could provide that opportunity for him. And then he was have to, he would have to go out and earn it. And he's done that and more. Uh, he's a bigger body. He can shoot the puck. He wins face-offs. He makes plays. Obviously he's, he's uh, playing in, in the power play situation and, and penalty killing. He's picked up our concepts fairly quickly. It hadn't, it's been a while since he penalty killed. So it was a longer growth period for him, but now he's picked up on it and he's been real effective for us. So He's a guy that can not, he's power play, he's penalty kill, he's four on four, and he adds value by winning faceoffs. Uh, and right now he's showing he's strong on both ends of the rink. So that's that's been a great, great addition for us. And he's a, and he's a leader within the locker room. And like I keep going back to, he, he just loves being a Husky. Yeah. Uh, and one of the things I've heard about him too, I mean, is that he's a guy that, uh, you know, one of the first guys on the ice, one of the last guys off the ice. I mean, a guy that really puts his time in. Takes his job seriously. He wants to uh, make a living at this game, obviously help us win a championship, but go above and beyond his college career. And he's always working at his craft. And uh, he's real, real committed to it. And, and like I said, guys look up to him because they see that every day. It's not just every once in a while, pre-practice, during practice, post-practice, how he does the extra workouts uh, in the afternoon to get better, to help him prepare for the weekend games. Yeah. Dave, uh, really appreciate you taking a little bit of time and uh, best of luck to you guys uh, this weekend against Mankato. Awesome, Mick. Thanks for having me anytime. All right. Uh, this has been the Huskies Hockey Insider Podcast and Mick Hatton from the Rink Live. And please check out all of our great content here on the website.